Hey everybody, welcome, hope you're well. Uh, so this is the first for me. I'm at a Tesla supercharger, but not with a Tesla. So um, a certain number of sites in the UK have been opened up now so a Tesla supercharger can charge uh, other electric cars as well, not exclusively Tesla like it has been today. Not all sites, um, but what I'm going to show you in this video is what to do and how to get the car charging, uh, plus a few do's and don'ts along the way as well. So stick around, I'll show you all about charging a non-Tesla a Tesla supercharger. Okay, so uh, yeah, firstly, we haven't been able to charge non-Tesla Tesla superchargers until now, and there's a trial of currently, as I record this, 15 sites in the UK, and they're typically the quieter sites. So um, this in particular site is Wokingham, just off the main road round about there. And there's a, I think there's, hang on, one, two, three, four, about 16 stalls here. Um, and there's a couple of other testers here, but generally it's not a high usage site too much. So it's one of the sites in the trial. Uh, so what we try and do is we try and put a link in the description below, uh, which will take you through to a list of the current sites. But what you need to do if you've got an electric car with a CCS port is to firstly download the Tesla app. You register and you register your card on there. Um, for me, I've already got the Tesla app because I'm a Tesla owner, so my cars show on there as well. And so for me on the screen here, I've got a charge your non Tesla and so I'm going to do that and then in a minute I'm going to select the charger and activate the charger but it's all done on the app so before you do that though what I would say um, a few do's and don'ts as you get to a charger like this is with most other cars other than Teslas, the charging port is in the wrong place. So on a Tesla, it's on the rear left-hand corner and so you'd back up to a charger and you say I'll be parked here and use that charger however car like the BMW, it's on the rear right hand side. Uh, something like Audi, e-tron, GT and Porsche Taycan's at the front wing. So the cables on these are quite short. They're designed for Tesla's to back up and go straight in. So some cars are going to be a bit of a stretch, but what I would say is just consider uh, where you park and how you park because as I am right now, I'm actually taking up two bays. And that's one of the biggest concerns of Tesla owners, that a non-Tesla charging is going to take up two bays at the charging site. And if it does get busy, that's going to be a bit annoying, isn't it? So if you've got an opportunity to kind of park at the end of the row or somewhere where you won't take up two bays, obviously that's going to be preferable. Be careful when you're backing up, you don't back into charges and stuff like that as well. Um, but firstly, yes, try and pick a site on the, uh, on the charging area where you're not going to take up two bays. That's one of the biggest concerns. And be, just be aware that your car may not have a port in the right place for the cable to easily attach. So I've reversed this BMW right up pretty close to there and it should reach. I haven't tried it yet. Right, now, second step. As we come to here, uh, I'm going to open the charge port here great big fuel flap type thing on this BMW. Now, when you get to a charger like this, this is what's called a V2 supercharger. So there's both a type two connector, which are basically the original Tesla chargers, and that would go into this car, but it's pointless. Don't use that. That won't work. You need to have the CCS connector, which looks like this, which then will utilize the DC charging port on your CCS enabled car. If you don't have CCS, then you won't be able to use them. So there's some cars, the original Nissan Leafs, for example, Chadamo won't be able to use it. Um, uh, but most cars now are a standard CCS type connection. So I'm going to see if this will reach. It does. Fits in quite nicely there. And that fits in standard into the port there. Right, OK. Um, and you've got to bear in mind as well, don't try and use other cables to join one to another. Some, I've seen pictures online of people with the Type 2 to Type 2 cables and kind of connecting it to that and connecting it to the car. That won't work. The CCS connector only. Right, so now, I've never done this before, by the way, so let's have a look. So I'm going to click on the, the Wokenham site on the app, and then I've got to select the stall number. So I'm on 3B here. Now... At this site, we've got 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B, and such like. What you want to try and do as well is avoid parking next to somebody, for example, on 3A, because these two chargers share power. So if somebody's just started charging there, you plug in here, you'll charge slower than you might be able to, but also you would slow their charge rate down as well. Right, okay, so now I'm going to select 3B on the app here and start charging. And I can hear that just click then. And we should have a charging BMW on a Tesla supercharger. Connecting to the charger, this may take up to two minutes, it says on the screen here. And so um, currently, I will show you in here what the rates are. I don't usually quote too many things about price and rates because they always change. So um, 
Each site can be a different price, so don't assume it's always the same, but it will tell you on the app which site is which. And also the app is where you can see all the different charges as well. You can view a map, you can zoom out and show charges in, in an area, and that's what you'll do there. So it should be starting to charge now. I can see a flashing blue light, so I think it's actually, here we go, it's actually charging. So this car's currently got 37%. Now the charging rate here is currently charged at 62 kilowatts, so we'll see if that ramps up, but again, these are V2 chargers. And it's going to show me the cost and the energy used. Oh, look, 142 kilowatts now it's jumped up to. Not too shabby, 38% state of charge. Now here, I think it's 60 pence a kilowatt hour, which is quite expensive. So ultimately, I don't want to be here for too long or do any more than I, is essential, basically, because remember there are other charges that can be cheaper, but obviously a lot of the charges have gone up in price. But you can also register for a, um, uh, a monthly payment and then you get reduced charging costs as well. So if it's something you think you might use quite a lot, you can do that and get some reduced costs. But otherwise, it's fairly expensive. So, you, you know, you only want to put in what you need to go uh, put into. And at the end of the day, use apps like uh, Better Route Planner or ZapMap or one of the other charging network apps. And you may find it as a Shell Recharge or a BP Pulse down the road is possibly a different rate. And as with any rapid charge, if you don't need to use it, don't use it. You'll save yourself money and you'll keep the chargers free for somebody else. So um, it's charging away. 41% charge from 37% when it first triggered there. So that didn't take too long. 142 kilowatts, which is probably the maximum for this V2 charger anyway. Some tester superchargers are more powerful. Uh, they can be up to 250 kilowatts. But I don't think there's any electric cars that would pull that. Uh, and that includes cars like the Porsche Taycan, by the way. So the Porsche Taycan, I don't think would pull that. It can charge at 270 kilowatts, but it runs an 800 volt uh, battery pack and system. So uh, the Tesla charger is not 800 volts. So even a Porsche Taycan pulling up to a 250 kilowatt uh, Tesla charger, I think it's only going to pull from my, I'm trying to work out calculations. It depends what options you've got on your Taycan as well. It might only pull 50 kilowatts, some people are saying. Um, so you've got some good information that do comment below and then that'll be useful for other people viewing this video. Uh, but what I would say is uh, Porsche Taycan, don't expect 250 kilowatt charging. In fact, it may be 100 kilowatts or 130 kilowatts, but it won't charge at its maximum rate. So again, if you don't need it, if there's a, a grid serve or an Ionity down the road, go and use that. That's probably better. And speaking of Ionity, um, just whilst I, I've got this BMW here and I qualify because it's a new BMW i4, you can get cheaper Ionity charging. In fact, Ionity with a BMW like this is 26 pence per kilowatt hour. Here, it's 61 pence per kilowatt hour. So obviously I don't really want to spend much here any more than I need to. So, um, but that there seems to be working away. When I want to unplug it, I'll just take it out and charge it and it will debit the uh, credit or debit card that you registered when you registered the app. Um, but there we go. It's as simple as that. But just try and be courteous to um, you know, other drivers, other users and the spaces that you take up or hopefully don't take up. And then be careful you're not overstretching the cables or driving onto pavements and doing silly stuff like that as well. Um, so as ever, just be respectful. Don't leave litter as well. The amount of times I go to charging sites and someone's just put a bag of litter there. Don't do that. <laughs> What's the point of that? So, yeah, just be respectful, Curtis, and I think everyone then can enjoy uh, the use of a, a supercharger if you need it. Um, it's good that it's open. I think, you know, just within a consideration, the busiest sites won't be open. But at the end of the day, if I was here with my family now and I needed a charge, even as a tester owner, I'd be glad another car is able to do so and I can get my family home. So I think it's a good thing as long as everyone's just sensible, reasonable, and don't use it if you don't need to use it. What's the point of spending the money? Because it is quite expensive. So I think I'm going to unplug. <laughs> okay, everyone, I hope that's useful. Um, they certainly work. There'll be more sites probably coming live, but the busiest sites will probably keep just as Tesla only. Uh, but it's more chargers on the road instantly that we can all use. So, um, yeah, I think well done, Tesla, for that. Let's just hope everyone uses it respectfully. Thank you for watching. I hope that's a useful video, and we'll see you in the next one. Uh, so I've added 16, just coming up to 17% of the battery. It's already cost me £7.32, so I'm going to stop the charge, just push at the bottom there, stop charging, and I'm going to unplug it. <laughs> I don't need any more to get home. That's all good. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.